Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Uh, kindly subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. Now we are going to solve uh, one another problem from chapter 14, Himmler Dynamics. The problem says that the 25 pound block has an initial speed of 10 feet per second when it is midway between spring A and B. After striking spring B, it rebounds and slides across the horizontal plane towards spring A. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the plane and the block is 0.4, determine the total distance traveled by the block before it comes to rest. So in the problem, st uh, in the problem statement, we are given these two springs A and B. And the stiffness of spring A is 10 pound per inch and the st stiffness of spring B is 6 pound per inch. And this block having a mass uh, weight of 25 pound is located in between uh, these two springs one feet away from both of these springs right and the total distance between spring a and b is two feet and it is in the middle of both of these springs and this block is moving with a velocity of 10 feet per second towards that spring b and initially it is at a location of one feet from this spring b now let's say that this is the initial state of the spring Right, so we can say that initially the velocity of the spring v1 is 10 feet per second and we will consider uh, we will solve this problem in considering uh, the work energy principle from one state to another state and then from that state to one, one another state right so we will consider three very different states so first of all if this block moves and it reaches somewhere here let's say it travels some distance until here from that initial position until here right let's say let's say if it travels this much distance so what will happen is that the length of this spring will decrease and it will compress so let's say that this is the compressed length of the spring b so now what will happen is that uh, when it reaches here the spring force is going to apply and this spring is going to apply the force in this direction right and there will be a friction force as well if it is moving in this direction then the friction force will be acting in the opposite direction so let's say this is the friction force which is acting in this direction and that is mu k times n right so mu k is 0 0.4 so let me draw the free body diagram here we will have that uh, when it just strikes touches the spring b so we will have that spring force which will be acting in this direction this is uh, let's say i write f s this is the spring force and the if it is moving in this direction so we will have the kinetic friction which will be going to act in this direction and that will be 0 0.4 times the normal force and the surface will apply the normal force in the upward direction and we will have its weight which will be acting vertically downward so first of all if i apply the uh, summation of forces along the y direction equals to zero this is our positive x and y direction so the summation of forces along y uh, sorry it's not equal to zero this will be equal to m a y and as we can see that it is only moving in the horizontal direction so there will be no acceleration in the y direction so this will be equal to zero so from this if i if i add up the forces in the y direction so this n is acting in the positive y direction so i will write n minus w and this is equal to 0 and from this we can say that n is equal to w and w is 25 pounds similarly if we consider the work energy principle if this is the state 1 and if this is the state 2 if reach is somewhere here if it compresses the spring and it comes to rest so at state 2 the spring will come to rest and the velocity will be equal to 0 so now from this state 1 to state 2 if we apply the work energy principle so that will be the kinetic energy at state 1 plus the summation of all the work done due to the external forces between 1 and 2 or from 1 to 2 and that will be equal to the kinetic energy at state 2. So now the kinetic energy at state 1 is 1 divided by 2 and the mass is the weight is given which is 25 so the mass is 25 divided by g which is 32.2 into v1 square so v1 is 10 so this will become 10 square plus now we have uh, these four forces so 
is the block is moving in the horizontal direction and this n and w are perpendicular to the displacement so they are not doing any work so this spring force and this uh, friction force they are doing the external work right so as we can see that the spring as we know that the spring force always perform the work done let me write that the work done due to the spring force this is always equal to half k x square and what is x square x x is the chain in the length of the spring so the block has moved from here to here this is one feet and this is the from from here to here this will be the chain in the spring length this is one feet distance and this is let's say this is x b the chain in the length of the spring b right so now we can write that the spring energy will be and this is minus remember this is minus and uh, let me write this as positive and then we will decide the whether this work done is positive or negative so this is half k and this will be x b square and now as we can see that the block is moving in this direction and the spring force is acting in this direction so this means that this is the negative one so we have to write minus sign here so now i will write that uh, this the work done due to the spring force that is minus half and k is given which is 60 so i will write this is 60 x b square and as we can see that uh, also the block is moving towards the left and the friction force is acting uh, this is moving towards the right and the friction force is acting towards the left so again this friction force is doing the negative work so i will write uh, minus uh, let me write this is plus and that will be minus 0 0.4 the friction force times n and n is 25 and now this friction force is applied from the initial state until this particular point so so it acts for the total distance of 1 feet plus xb right so i will multiply it with 1 plus xb so this will be the work done due to that friction force and the kinetic energy at state 2 will become 0 since it will come to rest so this is equal to 0 now in this equation we have that one unknown xb so this will enable us to find the change in length the compression in the spring length when the block uh, comes to rest until this point right so let me calculate this is 1 divided by 2 uh, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 multiplied by 25 multiplied by 10 square divided by 32.2. So this is 38.82 minus this will become 30x b square and this will be minus 0 0.4 into 25. So 0 0.4 into 25 is 10. So this is minus 10 1 plus xb equals to 0. And if I write the xb square term first, and then let me simplify this. This is minus 10 into xb. And plus this 38.82. And this minus 10 into 1 is minus 10. So this is equal to 0. So this is minus... 30xb square minus 10xb and plus 38.82 minus 10 is plus 28.82 and this is equal to 0. So now this is a quadratic equation in terms of xb. So we can find xb by using the quadratic equation. So the coefficient of xb square is minus 30. The coefficient of xb is minus 10 and the constant is 28.82 so that xb is 0 0.8275 let me write that xb is 0 0.8275 meters and there will be one another solution and that solution is negative and that is let me write that solution which is equal to minus 1.161 minus 1.161 meters now as we can see that this was the original length or the unstretched length of the spring let's say this is the l and 
the after compression let's say that this is the final length this is the initial length and this is the final length so xb will be equal to we can write that xb will be equal to initial length minus the final length and as we know that in this case the initial length is greater than the final length so this xb must be positive right so it cannot be negative so so this is not the value of xb this is the exact value of xb which is 0 0.8275 meters so from this we conclude that when this block b uh, having weight of 25 pound is moving with 10 feet per second velocity so it will compress the spring and it will compress the spring for a distance of 0 0.8275 now if we consider that from state 2 to state 3 right since we are asked to find the distance that the block covers when it comes to rest after striking with the spring b so let's say that from state 2 then it reaches somewhere here let's say from state 2 again it reaches somewhere here let's say this is state 3 so then it covers some distance let's say from here to here it will cover some distance until here let's say until the midpoint let's say this is the new s that it will travel this is not known and this l this s will consist of that some part will consist of that xb right so from here to here this is that s and it will travel back that distance xb right so let's say that this is that v2 equals to 0 and first it will travel that distance xb and then it will lose the contact with the spring and then it will further travel distance s so we are we, we want to find this s now so now again we need to consider the work energy principle from state 2 to state 3 so now i will write that the kinetic energy at state 2 plus the summation of all the work done due to the external forces equals to t3 the kinetic energy at state 3 so now when it will start from here and so it will stop again here right we want to find the distance travel when the block comes to rest in the statement it is said that before it comes to rest right so we say that v3 is equal to 0 so this means that the kinetic energy at state 3 is also equal to 0 and the kinetic energy at state 2 equals to 0 so then we are left with the summation of the work done due to the external force is equal to 0 now the block is moving towards the left it is traveling in this direction and again that normal force is acting in the upward direction the weight is acting in the downward direction the weight is 25 pounds and this is the normal force and now when it is moving in this direction so the friction force is going to act in this direction and that is uh, 0 0.4 times n and 0 0.4 times n is 25 as we know and now the spring force is acting in this direction this is that spring force and now the spring force and the displacement travel are in the same direction so now this work done will be the positive work and the work done due to the friction force will be the negative work and this n and weight are not doing any work so now again we can write that the work done due to the friction force is the negative work so i will write minus 0 0.4 into 25 multiply by the distance or the displacement travel so now the total displacement travel is s plus xb from state 2 to state 3 so that is x plus xb and then the work done due to this uh, spring force right so as we know that the work done due to the spring force is again minus half let me write this as plus half kb kb is 60 into xb square and now as we can see that the spring force and the dis displacement travel they are in the same direction so now this is the positive work so we have to write that this is the positive work so we so we need to add this right so plus into plus is plus so we will write this as plus and the kinetic energy at state 3 will become zero since it will come to rest we want to find this as distance when it comes to rest right so now 0 0.4 into 25 is minus 10 0.4 into 25 is 10 s plus x b and this is uh, 30 x b square 
and this is equal to 0. Now we know xb, this is minus 10s plus uh, this is minus 10 into xb plus 30xb square and this is equal to 0. And now we know xb, so I will write minus 10s and let me bring these two terms to the other side, so they will become 10xb minus 30xb square and now let me put those values, this is minus 10. And now if I divide both sides by minus 10, so we will have the equation of our s, that is 10xb minus 30xb square divided by minus 10. So this is 10, xb is 0 0.8275 minus 30 into 0 0.8275 squared multiplied by the 10 and this is this is 10 times and divided by that minus 10. So now this is 10 into xb which is 0 0.8275 minus 30 into 0 0.8275 squared divided by minus 10. So this gives us s equals to 1.227. So s equals to 1.227 meters. So from state 2 to state 3, it travels a distance of 1.227 when it just leaves the contact with the spring. Remember, right? We have considered the s from this particular point. Now, if you want to find the total distance traveled by the spring, let me write that the capital X is the total distance traveled by the spring in the horizontal direction. So that will be equal to from state 1 to state 2, it traveled a distance of that 1 feet plus xb, so I will write 1 plus xb and then from state 2 to state 3 it covers a distance of xb plus this s that we have just determined, right? So we can write it like this. So this will be 1 plus 2xb plus s. So now we can find that total distance traveled this is uh, 1 plus 2 into 0 0.8275 and plus that s which is 1.227, 1.227. So this is 3.882. This total distance traveled is 3.882 from state 1 to state 3 and this is in meters. You people need to remember that uh, while solving, while considering the block from state 2 to state 3, we have assumed that the block comes to rest before striking with the spring A. So now from our calculation that is confirmed that uh, the block is not striking with spring A since S comes out to be less than 2 feet distance. The distance between both the springs is 2 feet. This is the given distance between both the springs. So from our calculation from work energy principle, this S is less than 2 feet. So if this is less than 2 feet, this con confirms our assumption that the block comes to rest in between uh, those two springs when it uh, comes in contact with spring B and when, then when it leaves spring B, so it comes to rest somewhere between both of these. So the block covers the total distance of 3.882 meters from state 1 to the final state when it comes back to rest after striking with that spring B. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Kindly subscribe my channel for the solution of such more problems of Hibbler Dynamics.